when assessing the performance of a marketing tool, including loyalty programs, you have to consider also market characteristics. And in this context, I would like to present you uh, the double jeopardy phenomenon or the double jeopardy law. We have actually very few laws in marketing, because we are social science, so we cannot establish laws, but double jeopardy is a law in marketing that had been discovered by Andrew Ehrenberg. Yeah, he found double jeopardy and he replicated, so with a lot of different surveys, the double jeopardy phenomenon in a lot of different sectors, different countries and different time frames. Replication was the basis of his research. In his replications, he found the double jeopardy phenomenon. Double jeopardy means uh, that small share brands, small brands, are uh, jeopardized twice. First of all, they have less market share and subsequently less bites for less penetration. The first jeopardy. The second jeopardy is they have less buyers and these buyers buy less often or are less loyal. So they're hit twice. They have less buyers, less penetration, and these buyers buy less often. And this phenomenon has been found in basically all sectors, fast moving consumer goods sectors, found it for gasoline stations, he found it for sitcoms, movies, found it for all kind of markets. That small brands have a double disadvantage because they have less buyers and these buyers buy less often or are less loyal. But or on the other hand, big brands have a double advantage. They have more buyers or more penetration and these buyers are more loyal as they buy more often. And this is what you can see actually in this framework. You can see here different brands. You see the seven stores we have seen already in the, in the study about loyalty programs. And you see here the penetration, which means the number of buyers. So you can see that the bigger stores, Carrefour, for example, and Casino are leader brands. They have more buyers. And these buyers buy also more of purchase frequency. And small brands, such as here, Super U. Has less buyers. And these buyers buy less often. And this can be explained by double jeopardy. And before talking about efficiency of loyalty programs, just some examples. We could take the examples of sodas. Let's take a leading soda, for example, Coke, Coca-Cola. And let's take a small brand, a research of variety brand, such as 7up or Sprite. If you look at the penetration of Coke, that is the number of buyers who bought at least once in a given purchase time uh, Coke, penetration of Coke is rather high. And so we would probably find something like 60 to 70 person, 7 up uh, or Sprite or Canada Dry, uh, which is a research of a variety brand. And so two brands, one Coke with high penetration or high number of buyers, one Sprite with a low number of buyers. Now if we compare uh, the purchase frequencies, those who buy Coke buy the higher purchase frequency Coke, then those buyers Fewer buyers who buy a Sprite, Seven Up, or Canada Dry would have a, a smaller purchase frequency. So Seven Up and Sprite are hit twice, not only because they have less buyers, but also because these buyers buy less frequently. If you look to the television chats, yes, we have something like five channels. There are some leader, leader channels, well, TF1, the leading channel, or France 2, France 3. So these channels, TF1, has probably more penetration. On the other hand, you have Channels like Direct A, Energy, the music channel has less buyers or less, less people who look at this channel, so less penetration. And if you look to the frequency of audits, yeah, that is uh, how many times people look at TF1 and to Direct A or Energy, we would probably also find again a lower purchase frequency or lower visiting pre frequency than for the TF1 channel. So we would again find double check. Because smaller chains are not have not only less people who look at this channel, they look less frequent. The other channel. We can find look also at websites. If you compare Amazon, a leading website with a smaller website, you have probably more people who buy at least once at Amazon than at a small site uh, like Fnac uh, or Boots. And again, in terms of purchase frequency, uh, they have certainly less purchase frequencies than Amazon. I would like to show to you that this phenomenon can be found actually everywhere. But the consequences are quite dramatic for the brand because they have less loyalty. Subsequently, also, marketing tools are less efficient for smaller brands. So in other words, if we come back to our loyalty program, brands with 
smaller penetration should have have not only lower loyal customer loyalty than bigger brands, but also their loyalty tools or the marketing or loyalty programs are less efficient. And that is what you can see here. This is a benchmark norm calculated by econometrical model. And so all what is beyond above the line is called access all. This is brought by a marketing tool. And what all what is on the line is normal. So there's actually no impact of the loyalty program. So for example, three, one and three, but you can find actually store two and four have excess loyalty, which is brought by the loyalty program. So leading brands have more efficient marketing actions, including loyalty programs. And if you look at the small brands, they have actually hidden three times because they have less bias, less loyalty, and the loyalty programs work less efficiently because they're below this line. So the loyalty is even lower than it should be theoretically according to the penetration. So this shows clearly these three brands have double jeopardy and that the consequence of double jeopardy is that their marketing tools, including loyalty programs, sales promotes, work less well than the marketing actions for the leading brands, which are above the line. So it's a, even a triple jeopardy because they have less bias, less loyalty, and the marketing actions work less well. It means that in markets where um, we find high competition, marketing actions do not work in a similar way. Small actors have marketing actions which do not work as well as the marketing actions of the big, lead, big actors. So if you're working for a small brand, if you're doing advertising, sales promotion, or operating a loyalty program, your marketing actions will be less efficient. So you will pay a lot of money without efficiency, no? because efficiency is below what it should be in these markets. So it's a bad strategy to say, I'm a small actor, I will imitate the big actors, no? because these actors were the last ones who launched their loyalty. They did it through imitation. So imitation is a bad strategy. Clearly, the efficiency is below the norm. So it's a bad idea to say, I will imitate the big actors because the programs will be less efficient. All marketing actions will be less efficient. The only way to come out of this thermal circle is to create a niche store. For example, if you have an organic food retailer, it would make sense to launch a loyalty program because he's in a specialized niche market. So he becomes, in the niche market, a leader. He would create leadership in the niche market due to a special niche position. And then, when you're the leader in the niche market, then you again have the advantages of double jeopardy. Because in the niche market, you become the leader, and market leaders have more buyers, which are more loyal, and which have more efficiency in terms of marketing. So that is why the only issue in competitive markets is to create a niche position through a special position. And that's valid for all, all contexts. How should we act in online retail with major actors such as Amazon or China, Alibaba? What is the adequate strategy? The adequate strategy is to create a niche website to differentiate yourself as Amazon, Alibaba are, are generalists. So you might achieve a niche position, but you cannot be a generalist because it's too difficult. Because what all what you will achieve is, is double jeopardy. So you have to find a positioning either an ethic positioning, or either if you come back to our relationship marketing paradigm, either positioning where you say, okay, I'm the brand in which you can trust to, I'm a small brand, I'm ethical, clean, I'm doing corporate social responsibility, because if you're looking at the working condition at Amazon, or I don't want to know how it works at Alibaba, it's probably even worse. But the only issue would be position on a different market, on a niche market, or to become specialist for very specialized goods. And so I cannot give you the recommendations now because it, it depends on the sector. But what I want to give you as a recommendation don't do benchmarking stupidly because benchmarking leads to imitation, and imitation leads to no competitive advantage. And above all, if you're doing imitation on markets where you have big actors, you will come into the double jeopardy situation where, we, where you hit, hit twice and where you actually hit even uh, three times because your marketing actions will be less e efficient. This is the double jeopardy law, which is actually one of few laws we have in market that can be observed in every sector. It's actually measured with a model called Dirichlet model, which is used panel data, Aaron Berg, found in 
uh, all markets this double jeopardy. So in summary, double jeopardy means that there are brands that are hit twice. They have a first disadvantage because they have less bias, so less penetration. And these buyers buy less often or frequently, so they are less loyal. And actually they even hit them three times because their marketing operations are also less efficient. So the only issue is to create niche position, come out of the competitive situation. As usual, if you want to go deeper into the topic, then I invite you to read our article published in Journal of Marketing Management, The Impact of Loyalty Programs on Repeat Purchase Behavior. I also invite you to read the book of Andrew Ehrenberg, Repeat Buying Theory and Applications, which you can find for free on Google to download. In this book, you can find the Double Jeopardy Law, but also other laws, empirical laws, that have been found in marketing. And this gives you an overview how to create repeat purchase behavior and which are the instruments that can increase repeat purchase behavior. You can also read the article It's a Dirichly World, published in Journal of Advertising Research, our articles about brand loyalty and the evolution of brand loyalty, published in Journal of Business Research and Marketing Letters. This, these are studies that show the long-term evolution of loyalty and if loyalty decreased or increased and the reasons why these phenomenons happen. They are all based on the Dirichlet model and empirical laws that have been established through the Dirichlet model.